pi by L. We go to the next topic of deriving the slope deflection equation. And uh, a case where there is no chord rotation, no support settlement, and see how to proceed. So we are looking at a continuous beam and we are putting all our attention to one element in that beam, say AB, could be subjected to any arbitrary loading as shown. Okay, concentrated load, distributed loads, it doesn't matter. Let's say the deflected shape is as drawn there. Now it's deliberately drawn in a funny way because we want to observe one Convention, a convention which George Maney introduced 100 years ago, we are still following that. All rotations to be clockwise positive. You can see I have drawn it deliberately in a way that theta A is positive, clockwise, theta B is also clockwise positive and this uh, forces me to lift the beam up slightly, does not matter, it is exaggerated here. So you have theta A positive, theta B positive. There are no deflections here at the joints, there are only unknown rotations. So we are beginning with this extremely simple case. And what are we trying to do here? We take the free body of that beam, we remove the supports, and we find that at the two ends we have two unknown moments, MAB and MBA. Here again we invoke the clockwise positive convention. Both are shown clockwise positive, though we know very well intuitively that it is going to be hogging. Um, that means on the left side MAB will be uh, anti-clockwise, but let's stay with this convention, assume MAB and MBA, and please note, once you know MAB and MBA, you can find the vertical uh, reactions VA and VB shear forces. So our only unknowns are MA and M, MAB and MBA, and so the equation we are going to derive is an equation expressing MAB MBA in terms of theta A and theta B. So they are probably the right thing to call them is slope equation because there is no deflection here. Slope equation. How can we derive expression for MAB and MBA in terms of theta A and theta B? That is the simplest way to start. So we will take the kinematically determinate structure. So that means we arrest theta A and theta B, you got a fixed fixed B. Now, the starting point in all the displacement methods is you should know what happens in this condition, which means you should know what is called as fixed end moments. Theta A, delta A should be 0, theta B, delta B is 0, you get some fixed end moments, which we write with a superscript F, MFAB and MFBA. This is something you should know. You can get it in tables, but you can also derive ease using conjugate beam method. Okay, so you, for standard cases, we'll show you how to do it. You need to know this fixed end moments. You need to know. You don't need to know anything beyond that. Now, what do we do? We want to get back the original shape. We are not getting it now. We've got some other deflected shape. So, what should we do? We take the same kinematically determinate beam, and now we give a rotational slip at theta a. Remember rotational slip? We discussed it earlier. So somehow let theta a slip, only theta a, don't do theta b at the same time. And now we know the story, we know the flexural stiffness, so the deflected shape is going to look like that, agree? The moment this slip takes place, you get some moments. What are the moments you get? How much you get on the left side? You get 4 EI by L, theta a, that's a stiff determinate beam. And then now the separate rotational slip theta b, you get now 4 EI by L theta B on the right side and 2 EI by L theta A on the left side. And if you superpose all these three pictures, you should get back the original picture. You should get back the same deflected shape. You should get back the same rotations and you, you will get the same rotation. How? In the first case, theta A is 0. In the second case, theta A. In the third case, theta A is 0. You add up everything, you get theta A. Same is true with the right hand side, you get theta b. So you are getting the slopes correctly, the deflections are all zero at the supports and obviously the forces must also add up to satisfy equilibrium. So what does it mean? It means MAB is MFAB plus 4 EI by L theta A plus 2 EI by L theta B and MFBA, MBA is MFBA plus 2 EI by L 
theta a plus 4 ei by l theta b. These are your first simplified, simplest slope deflection equations. You can write them in matrix forms. Pull out your unknown theta a and theta b to the right side in this manner. Okay. Now, look what's happened. Any given loading, you can write down MFAB, MFPA. And you, if someone gives you theta A and theta B, you can straight away get MAB, MBA. Otherwise, you'll have to invoke some additional equations and we'll see how that can be done. But anyway, the derivation of the fundamental equations are done here. It's very easy to do. You should remember the derivation. And please note, we're assuming theta A, theta B to be clockwise positive. We are assuming MAB, MBA, MFAB, MFBA also to be clockwise positive. In case they are negative, it means that the actual direction is anti clockwise or counter clockwise. Try to remember the standard fixed end moment. For example, if you have a fixed fixed beam with a constant load in the middle, you should be able to prove this. The fixed end moments are WL by 8 on either side, hogging which means you must write it as MFAB is equal to minus WL by 8 because it's going to be anti-clockwise and MFBA will be plus W by 8, WL by 8. If you have uniformly distributed, oh, if you have an eccentric load, then it's important to derive this. Remember the formula is minus WAB squared by L squared on the left side and plus WA squared. If you have a uniformly distributed load, it's, and let's say it's Q naught, say kilonewton per, uh, per meter, if the total load is W, then Q naught is W by L, then the answer is W by L by 12, minus W L by 12 on the left side, plus W L by 12 on the right side, or if you wish, minus Q naught L squared by 12 on the left side, and plus Q naught L squared by 12 on the right side. Then you can have other cases. There are textbooks which give you all possibility. Right now, it's sufficient to remember, and you need this for any examination, the first three cases. That's all you need, which I've picked. The others you need not remember. Life is an open book exam. You can look up any book and get this anytime. You have other cases. Please go through this. You may need some of these, for example, when you have hydrostatic pressures and so on. And... Uh, the last case is interesting. When you have a concentrated load somewhere, you have the moments you get is clock sides if you have a clockwise M0 and it's M0 by 4. In fact, this is one of the few instances where the left hand side is also M0 by plus M0 by 4. All the other cases, it's minus. Remember this, we have these charts readily available. Now, let's see how to apply this method. So, we have proceeded slowly, we've derived the equation, let's now apply the method to a standard case. So let's take a difficult problem, okay? Only the concept, we don't solve this problem. You have here a continuous beam, A, B, B, C, and C, D. You need to know the flexural stiffnesses. If all the stiffnesses are the same, you need not worry, but here you've been told that A, B has a flexural rigidity of E, I, B, C has two E, I, C, D has E, I, all the spans are equal, the loads are given to you. There is a concentrated moment also acting at C, and that too it's anti-clockwise, it's M0. But you can see clearly no support settlements are there, so this belongs to the category of problems where you don't have sway. Let's now see how to proceed. First, you attempt to draw the deflected shape as best as you know. You may draw it slightly wrong, you may have got the rotations wrong, doesn't matter. We, we write the unknowns as theta b, theta c, and we assume they are clockwise positive. We know for sure theta a is 0, we know for sure theta d is 0, and we know for sure there are no deflections, so we need not even mark them. How do we proceed? Well, you have a degree of kinematic indeterminacy here equal to 2. Theta b and theta c are the unknown displacement. Now, please note, in force methods of analysis, you don't bother to find theta b and theta c. You just want the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. Actually, in displacement methods, also we want that. But we are forced to find out theta b and theta c in the slope deflection method in order to get to MAB and MBA. There's another method, which is a simplification of the slope deflection method. 
called the moment distribution method where also you can bypass explicitly finding theta b and theta c and directly getting the bending moment method. We will see that later. For the present, we will do it the hard way. Let us find out theta b and theta c. How do we do that? Well, the next step is to find fixed in moments. What does it mean? You separate out the three beam, the three beams A, B, B, C, and C, D, and arrest the two ends. That means put theta b equals zero, theta c equals zero, and find out the fixed in moments. So you can look at those tables and get MFAB, MFBA, MFBC, MFCB, and in this case, MFCD and MFDC will be zero because you don't have any intermediate loading at CD. That concentrated load applied M0 will is going to any one beam. It will stay at the node, so it cannot be converted to a fixed end moment. Okay. So let's say you know how to do this. From the previous slide, you have the tables, you can find these moments. What do you do next? Well, next you write down the end moments, the equation, the slope deflection equations. So by the way, this is a picture which actually tells you how to calculate MFAB. MFAB is minus WL by 12, MFBA is plus WL by 12, MFBC is minus WL by 8, MFCB plus WL by 8. These are standard equations you can draw. For each beam element, mechanically go ahead and write down the slope deflection equations. So MAB, MFAB plus 4EI by L theta A plus 2EI by L write this down mechanically. Wrote for beam AB. Now take beam BC write them down. Now you will write MBC and MCB and similarly you do it for CD, MCD and MDC. Okay. You have written this in terms of the two end moment, end rotations. But note, some of those end rotations are zero. So you can take a pen and scratch out those. Theta A is zero, theta D is zero and in this case MFCD and MFDC are also zero. So your equation becomes simpler. Okay, so you look again at the equation and say, if only I can draw my bending moment. So I have two unknowns. I've got my slope deflection equation. I need to crack theta b and theta c. How do we get these unknowns? How do we get theta b and theta? C? Let's see. So we can write this more conveniently in a matrix form like this. So we've got those three beams. We've written the equations. We put uh, theta b and theta c as the unknowns and we need to crack these unknowns. How do we do it? We need to now remember the governing equations in displacement methods are equilibrium equations. You have to invoke some equilibrium equations corresponding to the unknown rotations. You have two unknown rotations theta b and theta c. So we have two equations. The equations are related to theta b and theta c. What are they? Well, corresponding to theta b, what can you say? Just look again. You will find that at b, you have two end moments, MBA and MBC. What can you say about them? Well, if you add up MBA and MBC, they should add up to whatever end MB. There is no constant moment there. So typically you can say MBA plus MBC equal to 0, which is another way of saying that the end moments you get there must be equal and opposite so that they kind of neutralize each other when you join the two beams. Very obvious. So you've got one equation. The second equation corresponding to theta C is interesting. Here you will say MCB plus MCD must equal to, must equal to, you have a constant moment at C and that's anticlockwise, so it must equal to a minus M0. So there should be a minus there if it's anticlockwise, it should be minus M0. And you can put down these equations with the minus sign. If you had a clockwise moment at C, you will put plus M0, but here you have a anticlockwise moment. Now you can solve this, you can try out this problem yourself and then crack the problem. Solve the equations, find the unknown theta b, theta c. In this case, they work out to these. It's not important, we are just looking at the concept. Substitute these values in the slope deflection equation, get the bending moment, draw the free body diagrams, draw the bending moment diagram, 
the sheer force diagram also attempt 